Thank you for taking the call. Of course. Um, I don't know what to say actually because uh, when I first sent you the, the email in September, I had a lot of things in my mind. And now I'm uh, uh, very confused. Um, I have, uh, you know, since, just to give you a very quick summary of uh, where I am right now is, um, I'm 60 years old. I've spent maybe 40, 45 years, you know, doing meditation practices or mostly reading lots of books, you know, from uh, Ramana Maharshi and uh, Isagadatta and Castaneda and all the different disciplines trying to find something that would resonate inside, you know. And um, I had come from a very strict uh, Islamic background, which um, did not fulfill me because it, I found myself, you know, saying prayers in a language I didn't understand, and there was not a deep um, translation of the Quran that I could that I could relate to, you know. So eventually, I dropped that and. I found myself more and more um, identifying myself with the uh, with with uh, the path of non-duality, and which was also very similar to what the Sufis were were looking at, you know, or are looking at, let's say. And in the meantime, I was working in a company. Um, I'm not working now, and. was very difficult and it is very difficult to to create a balance between the two activities you know the inner activity and the outer activity and now I've come to the point where I came across you know a, a month or so ago on some of the writings books of uh, Hamid Ali I don't know if you know him A.H. Almas yes and uh, his, his suggestion of an active inquiry into what is arising at the present moment without interfering seemed to resonate with me a lot more, you know. And I've been practicing that. And it has allowed me to, uh, to identify, let's say, some very subtle currents of thought, of feelings uh, underneath my thoughts, you know. Right now, for example, if I am uh, sitting quietly, I can hear my own voice in my head, you know, constantly talking to me all the day, even in my, I've even seen that in my dream state, or just when I'm waking up from a dream, you know, there's a voice exactly narrating what the dream scene was uh, going to do. And, and I know that there is an, even a layer behind that where there is fear, where there is a concern. You know, uh, one year ago I had a, a very significant uh, financial loss and uh, obviously I, I went through an emotional period for about two months and then I came across, you know, uh, a lot of uh, writings and I looked at the internet to, to try and see how I could manage myself, you know, uh, to deal with this. and to try and understand that there was something wrong, you know, I, I, I know that, that uh, our external circumstances are not happening at random, that there is something that is happening. Um, 
let me put it this way. Alon, my, my understanding is that we are beings of light, let's say. I'm using the term I and we just to be able to use language, okay? Then if we are without thought or without the I sense, we should be able to see just pure light around us. The reason we don't do that is because of our the reflection of our thinking, of our identifications. And it's not that I have a you know a strong desire to, to do that, but my my the, the current of thought that I have, the strong desire I have, uh, sorry, the feeling I have behind my thoughts is, is like a grasping for security, you know? And it is taking a lot of energy from me and my attention is constantly going to that, not allowing me to be truly free because Luckily, in my life, I know in the last few years, uh, especially this last year, I have seen how my whole attitude to life has changed. My relationships have changed. My habits have changed. You know, my desires have changed. And yet, there is this one fear, this this grasping for security that that is. Uh, not allowing me to to take a major step, you know. Not, in other words, um, it will sound incredible to you, but it's like I don't trust God, you know, in that sense. I mean, it's very hard for me to say, but I can give you all sorts of uh, examples of books I have read and. and and I've seen examples even in my own life of, uh, let's say, kind of miracles happening, you know. But somehow, something in me does not let me uh, appreciate the, the, the awesomeness of this, of this, uh, of awareness, of, of, of uh, divinity, of creation, you know, I can see the sky at night, I can, uh, sometimes in my, in some meditations, I have felt, you know, that the, the, the world was being created and non-created uh, through my breathing, um, but these have been very quick, uh, intuitive insights, if you want, you know, and they've gone, and I can see the beauty around me in, in plants, in animals, in people. But because I think, because of this fear, there is, there is, it, it just doesn't, I can't hang on to that. I can't get the trust, you know. And I, I was writing before that, that uh, I need to constantly, I have a list, you know, of all the things like, um, attention is very important. The, the eye sense is the is the creator of of all the illusion, etc. I need to read that list every day or every two days to keep reminding me. So it's not, you know, it's not something that comes out automatically. No, there's no, there's the peace is not there. I have to find that peace. Force, kind of force that piece through the reading, but as soon as I stop the reading, as soon as I face the external world, it, it, it disappears, you know. So, basically, my, my request to you, Alon, is, is uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I should meditate or carry on with this inquiry or or how should I face you know this 
life because I know this constant concern is eating me inside, yet I know it is a thought. I don't, I don't know if you want me to go on anymore, but basically this is my current situation. You know, I, I meditate, let's say, about 40 minutes every day, but during the whole day, since I woke up in the morning until I go to bed, I am constantly, you know, either reading books or watching videos of people like you or uh, uh, reading the scriptures. I read the Advaita Bodha Deepika. I've read the books of the teacher of Nisargadatta, the master of self-realization, many, many other books, you know, and, and constantly trying to sort of... Um, build a base inside, you know, to, to, to convince myself that what is outside is, is just a reflection of my thoughts, but it's not getting me anywhere. I invite you one moment to be still, yeah? sit comfortably. Excuse me, I, I, I didn't hear that. I invite you to sit comfortably and Sorry. just like that, yeah? And keep your eyes open and don't move, okay? Okay. Stay still and allow the attention to shift inward to the background. There is a background of awareness that is absolutely still. It's not even aware of thoughts, it is only aware of itself because it is your essence. You don't have to try to understand it. It's a sense of eternal peace. You listen to the silence. Let the presence of silence be so intense that you just fix the attention on that. Don't move, I'll ask you a question. Do you sense a sense of peace? No, don't think. No, you moving yet. Do you sense a sense of peace? I don't, don't know. Okay. So what are you sensing without trying anything? I invite you not to try anything, okay? Okay. okay. I sense a watching 
good. An observation. Okay. And now as you watch, you watch inside. Tell me if you have a thought when it appears. Just look inside if there is a thought. Just for a moment. What is the experience? Sorry, I didn't understand. What is the experience? Come back to check again. Check right now, look for a thought. It, it seems that there is an emptiness, but the like the thoughts have are hiding. That's fine. Can you check again if there is a thought? Good. Keep the eyes open. What is the experience? Even for a glimpse. emptiness and silence. Good. Just stay with that. Look into that. What is the experience right now? Even if it is subtle in the beginning. Excuse me? What is the experience right now? Even if it is subtle. There was a thought that expressed concern as to You don't have to maintain it. It's what I heard from the conversation or from what you shared is that what's lacking is the experience. Yes. And then trying to build a conviction in the mind for an experience is kind of almost hope, hopeless because the mind trying to convince itself about something that is prior to the mind itself that it is behind the mind therefore the mind convinces itself and it has doubt follows because it cannot really know the self who you are only the self which is eternal peace can know itself by itself the mind can understand everything what it is not about the mind. The mind cannot understand who you are. Who you are can be lived and experienced. It cannot be understood mentally. Therefore, it's to... When you sit on a day to day, like the 40 minutes and meditate, Yes. Don't, don't look for that experience. What you want is 
observe the thoughts and then if you can you share with me the practice that you do from the diamond uh, or um, what is the yeah. practice well I am trying to now um, examine everything that is happening to me with more emphasis on body emotions and body feelings and my perceptions versus uh, the thoughts um, which helps me to center myself and to examine what is arising and to ask the question what is behind what is the reason for this arising what does it mean because i am only seeing the apparent arising is only reflecting how my mind is interpreting what is arising not the truth and i want to know the truth so sometimes not all the time but at least I think once a day there is an answer, you know, there is an opening to a more subtle explanation of what is arising. Uh, some deeper thoughts come out to show me a, a part of myself that I did not understand before. Okay, that's good. So as you practice you stick with what resonates you as a practice and then at the end of the 40 minutes or, or one hour whatever time you sit mm -hmm. you just stop all practice and you sit comfortably and you just um, gaze into the empty space okay with no agenda with not looking with not trying with not nothing, no seeking the truth, just being for a moment, for some time, and see what reveals spontaneously, not because you're trying to do something. Okay. okay. And once you sense a peace, ordinary peace, just fix the attention on that. Like you sense this emptiness, silence, what you describe, a taste, a glimpse. Once you sense peace, put the attention on it. Do you understand what is to put the attention? Yes. yes. Just like listening right now, your attention on the words that are spoken. Can I say something? Is that uh, just now, as you were saying, put the attention on the peace with no agenda. There is a strong background in my mind about this question of trust that I mentioned to you before, in the sense that. Shame to say this, you know, but it seems like my spiritual seeking is like I wanted awareness to solve my day to day problems. Not that I'm seeking awareness just because I want to know God, you know. And it's very embarrassing, it's, but it's a truth that I've discovered uh, quite recently, you know. Well, the majority of the minds is like that because the mind is driven by gaining the personality so it wants to gain this awareness so it has a better life so it has a more a luck so it is a more whatever it wants to gain so it's gonna gain happiness forgetting and not realizing that the true being of who you are is absolute happiness it is eternal peace. So 
the mind tries to gain that peace when in fact you are that peace you are not the mind who is trying to gain it it's upside down so it's okay just start to sense that peace within you recognize these glimpses the more you recognize it these glimpses gonna start to open then you can start to fix the attention on that and then during the day you ex examine the thoughts you observe the sensations the feelings that arise due to identifying with the with the mind and you just examine these thoughts to see are these thoughts that the mind identifies are they real or I'm just imagining these thoughts and then you you practice what resonates for you what it seems that is lacking is exper experience more experiential so sometimes to do I don't know if you have a Vipassana retreat in your area that you can go for 10 days and do some work observing the breath which is experiential and learning to scan the body which is working with the sensation and di from this experience it won't be only mental here so it will enable you to be more more aware of the bodily sensation and be more present and then start to recognize a presence within that is is a sense felt experience it has nothing to understand and then so it's like working on two dimensions or one removing the false identification and the other is fixing the attention on a subtle sense of peace and then the more the attention is on it it grows infinitely yet this peace is changeless it's just that the more you remove the sludge that covers it the more it reveals itself to itself. Okay. Uh, we have, we have uh, Vipassana retreats. In fact, a friend of mine is, is going there two or three times a year. But I also did a, a, co a full course in, in Tai Chi, which uh, takes about one hour to do. I, I stopped doing that, but I know that my body many times uh, wants to do Tai Chi, you know. Uh, I find myself when I'm in the house, all of a sudden, uh, just automatically wanting to um, do this dynamic Tai Chi. You know, there's a static one and, and there's a dynamic one also. But there's one question I, I wanted to ask regarding this, is that when I, uh, there's a doubt about this in the sense that why is the physical body given, uh, considered to be more important as a direct experience rather than thoughts? Because if the body, isn't the body a result of the mind? So yes. why is attention on the thoughts considered to be something that is not as uh, important, you know, that people say stay present, meaning stay with the physical sensations and, and the feeling of presence in your body rather than the mind. Because if the body is produced by the mind, then it is an indirect experience, isn't it? Yes, you're correct. The thing is that when the some people are too mindy, so they are lost in their thoughts process. And when you bring it, the mind into the bodily sensation, you just use it as an anchor, as a bridge. Okay. So it's only a bridge. So being present with the body, it's still locked in time, so it's going to move, be moving means the body is heading only to death and the mind has to head back into the beginning which is eternity so it cannot do with the body 
so it's just to use it a little bit as a bridge until you sense more the sense of peace which permeates the whole body anyhow yeah it has no relationship with with the body yet the eternal peace permeates the whole universe so it's within every cell of the body so if you can be enough present then you can and the stream of thought stops then the, the eternal peace reveals itself so this is why you can use as a bridge the bodily sensation or the breath yeah or not moving the stillness of the body yet this is only a bridge when you work with the thoughts and you question the thoughts then if you are intensely aware when the thought arises and you ask who am I without this thought after this question complete itself if the mind is not active what remains is eternal peace there is no answer for this question the real answer is the experience of eternal peace yet if one is not able to see that subtle or the mind is too active we just give it temporarily a different vehicle to aid the mind so it can be more purified to move to a more subtle vehicle that's all okay okay thank you yeah it's yeah because the mind sometimes tries to jump or climb yet it cannot climb these steps the, the gap is too too much then we have okay. to give it some steps to help it it's not good or bad it just this is what requires okay yeah okay? it's just vehicle the vehicle okay. or the bridge is not the real thing yet without it we cannot cross the river we cannot we can't cross the river without the bridge or the boat okay at different times we use different bridges different boats that's all okay and regarding is it regarding my daily life is is there uh, how do I approach my daily life? You know, how how uh, maybe there is no answer to this question. You know, uh, just take it as it comes, right? There is, there is. A, I know when I sit down, you know, the, uh, quietly. I know that there is only what arises, and that there is no. Uh, I understand. Let's say not that I know. I understand that there is. It is all seamless, you know, that my, that this apparent space, this apparent computer, this apparent garden, whatever, is all the same. But uh, because, as you said, it is not a bodily or it is not an experience, it is all mental, um, when I'm faced with the life, you know, it, the, the, this fear comes, you know, this constant fear and somehow there is this looking or seeking for somebody to protect and I say, okay, so if I, will, will this awareness protect me? And yet when I sit down and look at the question, I say, look, the, the only thing that it exists is awareness. So, whatever arises, will arise. And then I, you know, I get into this loop of, of, but why do, how can I make, how, not the word I, but why does negativity arise instead of positivity, you know? And then it's, I know it's the mental loop, you know, that, that I keep getting into. And... Okay, okay. This, so, this, is, this is what makes me lose the, the peace 
that when I sit down to meditate, I'm so tired sometimes, you know? When, first of all, you have a, a schedule when you wake up, you know what you're going to do? Or you wake up and you're, it's all open? Not every day, no. Mostly I, because I'm not working now, I'm, uh, I, I have a, you know, um, my schedule is open. So is it good for you or it puts you into like you wander around, you know, you don't know what to do with yourself? A little bit, yes. It's, I, I know it's, it's not good for me because I see, I don't know what to do. Uh, because that, I, I look for books, I look yeah. for something to yeah. center myself. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. So what happens if you don't give the mind a job so, and it's not anymore a vacation, what happens the mind starts to don't know what to do with myself. And when I don't know what to do with myself, right away rises um, negativity, insecurity, uh, there is lack of clarity. So for the majority of the minds is not good. They have, the mind has to have a structure because it is made of a construct. It's a construction itself, yeah? It has a structure like a frame, foundation, frame, like a house is construct. The mind is made of it. So it needs a structure. So in that structure you work and you experience the peace within instead of out of the structure and the mind is insecure and it gets reactive and that obstructs the peace within you so if you get it to focus and you you it's clear for you how your day looks like in a simple way that in between it gives you gaps to do whatever yet you are aware that okay you sitting every day you begin, you start sitting, you go and practice, you go and read a little bit, you, you go and go out in the sun, you, you do something that is all supportive for you to go in and experience the peace within. Okay. And then with the, 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 the fear of um, survival and security, this is the ego, this is the first one, it's the ego, personality, that identifies with the body is seeking security, comfort, pleasure, appreciation, approval and love. So all of them start to rise within when you start to look within. So allow it to appear and be interested in it instead of fighting it. Instead of looking it at something bad, kind of study it, examine it see what you're really looking for because what, what's the reason you're looking for security is because if you will get the security you would sense a sense of peace and happiness isn't it so yes. the mind is confused is seeking for peace and happiness outside because it doesn't have the experience of this peace and happiness inside so when you when you're looking for this security just check it look into it examine it not as an enemy join it by questioning it if you look at it as an enemy you resist it and as you resist it it persists even stronger it is because i i just realized something you know that um this seeking security is that so that somehow my mind projects, okay, when you are secure, then you can be fully dedicated to your meditation and your awareness and, and the peace. And just now when you said that the peace is inside, uh, I just realized that inside, it doesn't really matter whether there is insecurity outside or not, you know. Yeah. I, I, it just, I think something has clicked somewhere. 
there is no real security outside. When you're seeking security, you experience insecurity. When you're seeking comfort, you experience discomfort. When you're seeking peace, you are experiencing restlessness. So, peace is your nature. Just observe, examine the thoughts, be aware of the bodily sensation, emotions, that is a reactivity of the body to a belief, a thought that the mind identifies, and be interested in it. Look at it, examine it, and start to catch glimpses during the day that there is, I call it grace, that the peace reveal itself, and just fix the attention on that. And it opens and opens by itself. You cannot make it open. You cannot force it. This is the arrogance of the mind. If I practice, I would gain it. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Yes? And it's good if you do some, like, a vipassana, even though it's a different path, just to use it as a cat catalyst for you to experience and be seated and really observe what's going on or go if there's somebody a being that is uh, awake in your area be in their presence because that's effects the books you read more books than I did so it's it's good you have to maybe be around a living being that has a, okay. a presence that affects your being in a deep way um, oh. not to follow anybody just to be around just to be guided just to be pointed so you start to experience this whole conversation is just to invite you that you start to sense and experience within okay actually I I know of a an old gentleman who's the uncle of my brother-in-law. He's 90 years old. And he has had some experiences. And now he is, uh, throughout his life, he has had a few experiences. And very recently, he is now, let us say, in a very constant state of uh, peace. You know, he, and he's saying that every day it's, uh, it's, it's deeper and deeper. And I have found myself quite peaceful when I'm with him, but uh, That's good. I cannot always be with him. You don't need always. Go yeah. on a daily basis, go on every few days, sit there, recognize it. The more you recognize it, the more it's like a flower opens or being established, rooted in the peace within you. You are that peace. I have one question, please, um, which is, um, you just mentioned the word grace, and this is something that has confused me, because there are some teachings which, which say that uh, ultimately the absolute is, is neutral, and some say that the absolute is pure love, or benevolence in the and of course if you believe which obviously is an act of the mind to believe in that benevolence then there's a sort of a dependence it creates an expectation that something will look after you you know and, and that again there is a, a placing an expectation so um, even the word you said now, grace, is that if I sit down with no agenda, somehow in, my, in the back of my mind there will be an expectation of the opening of that grace, you know, of, of how, how do I deal with this, um, or, or, or what is your opinion on this? When you experience the eternal peace within you, or changeless peace, which is absolutely still, this is grace. So you don't look for grace. When you just experience it, that's grace. Recognize it. And naturally, the more you experience who you are, 
the more grace there is in life not to protect you because who you are is changeless peace it doesn't need protection it is ever free to protect somebody is an imaginary imaginary individual entity we're not talking about that so grace is just experiencing who you are so when you're in the presence of a being who experiences who they are and you start to experience yourself this is grace so you get the grace from them which is the same grace it's you yes so you might go to this 90 per 90 year old person which he experienced he through the changeless peace and in his presence you experience a glimpses of this peace then you receive that grace and the more you start to sense it you don't need to go to him because it's omnipresent it's available every moment it is in the background it is the substratum of all appearances to appear and disappears into it yes it's this you know as i'm speaking with you i can sense some moments of peace and i know that there is a a strong identification of the of of the ego of let's say of all my worldly experiences you know who, where where all the the so called pleasure and the seeking and the and the pain have have been and uh, i can feel some distance but i have to be in this sort of environment you know when but uh, as soon as i start walking and i go out and it 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 disappears it's very difficult which is why i keep some notes with me to keep reading and to try and revive this uh, to to try and keep this distance all the time you know to keep myself saying no this is this uh, fear or this uh, grasping or or whatever anxiety is is a thought it's something that it's like you're carrying a suitcase you know it is not you it is something that is separate just well, your, really just separate, but just like clothes thought, but, sorry just like clothing yes you wear clothes you're not the clothes the clothing itself exactly this is why it's to stay around around someone or someone that enables you to ignite that presence that peace within you until the mind start to rest in that peace regardless to that one so you are saying that the, the practice will make the mind itself desire that peace instead of desiring to of think course, about other of things. course because the more you would have glimpses of this it's indescribable this is this is what the mind was looking for always except it forgot it so it was looking outside now once you the more you sense it and experience it internally then even the habit for it to look outside you would notice it and say okay come back come back it's inside you just forgot the direction that's all out of habit and you bring it back and in the period of life that you are at is it's very good because you have the time and you're mature enough you've seen enough in life that life doesn't deliver anything at the end right so and everything is temporary so no matter what you had you lost and whatever you what you think you have you're going to lose anyway yet eternal peace can never be lost so you start to be interested in it 
and then anything that causes you stress, discriminate it and examine it, make look at it, look at it in the eyes so you are not avoiding it. You allow it once it rises, you see what sensation it creates, generates in the body and you, you look at it like a, a warrior, a peaceful warrior, not fighting it. A warrior that just watches and allow it to arise, stay for some time and pass away. How do you, in this process, how does one discriminate between the pure watching and uh, not getting into an analysis, which means that you start getting into more mental, uh, uh, you know, analysis of, of uh, whatever is arising. If you question and it cuts the stream of thoughts, means you're looking at it, you examine it. If the stream of thoughts get evolved more, you're analyzing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, you can ask a simple question. The moment you would see that the thoughts are not real, truly see it, like you see an object, then you can ask the question, who am I without this thought? And you stick with that. So if that thought, you see this thought is not real, yet it causes you tension because the habit to believe that it's real. You just ask the question, who am I without this thought? Even if you have a, an answer, I'm more peaceful, more relaxed, then it brings you clarity at least. What do you mean when you say the thought is not real? What, what, what does that mean? Because the thought is there, right? It's, it, and I have thought sometimes about this, you know, that, that why, does, why do I believe in one thought and other thoughts that I used to believe I have been able to not believe? And I have only reached the point where I have seen that belief means like I have glued my identification with a thought, my, my self-identification with a thought. But how I have stopped believing other thoughts, I don't know. You know, you, you read many books about releasing thoughts or dropping a belief. I don't know what the mechanics are, you know, I don't know how to see whether this thought is real or not. I can only use logic. Okay. Uh, belief, okay, first of all, belief is ignorance. Ignorance is darkness, yes? A belief, okay. yeah, it's ignorance, because all the belief system for every human being is external. It's all borrowed from the outside through the five senses. Yeah? Somebody told me, I heard, collected, experienced. Right. Okay? Or I read, yeah. Yes. So now, when a thought appears, the content of the thought is either about the past, which is already over, so it's memory. So it's not really happening right now at least. Or about the future which is imaginary. Which is not happening yet. So either I imagine which I dream or I remember which is a memory which is also not real because the event or the object of my memory is not present right now. Okay? Let's say I remember about my childhood, these images and that moment when they appear, they are not real. I imagine this childhood right now. I don't even have a proof that I had a childhood other than imagining it. Yes. Yet imagination is not a real thing. Also, when I dream, I imagine all kind of things, and when I wake up from the dream, I realize it was not, nothing of it really happened. 
yeah, the mind was dreaming, dreaming it, yet actually the body was physically lying in the bed. Yes. So, the content is not real, and the thought that appears, appears in the present moment. So you just have to check, is it past or future? Or is it just images? If you see that they are not happening right now, and there is no thought that happen is happening right now, every thought is of the past, and every future is based on the past, because the mind cannot project the future without, without the memory of the past. So that way you start to see, okay, the thought is not real, in that moment, you cannot come to the conclusion that all thoughts are not real. Because the habit will come out that still there would be identification. Okay. And now you have to see it for the first time again. See, okay, what am I identifying with a certain idea? It should be different. I should have security. And then what happens right now? Actually, I'm quite secure without this belief, without this idea that I should have something more. And then, what I should have something more, it's the movement into the future. Yes. So I'm imagining what I should have. So this imagination is real or not real? Not real. It's not real. This is the process of discrimination that is required. Okay. I'll give you another example that would might be easy. If you observe the breath or the bodily sensation, every time the mind wander escapes it to the past or the future, it, it starts to imagine, right? Start to yes. dream. So it starts to dream so it's not real. Because dream is not a real thing. Only when you're dreaming you believe it to be real. When you wake up you realize it was just a dream the moment you catch the mind dreaming, you wake up from the dream of the mind. Yes. But it's, you know, you said something very important now, which is that all beliefs are, is ignorance, you know, all belief is ignorance. So that, therefore, everything I'm perceiving Everything I am aware of, I don't really know what it is, right? So, how does one proceed then? You know, how how can I how can I relate to something? Because I don't know if it. I don't know what it is. You know, I I have a belief. And I know what you're saying is, is true because it is all learned some from borrowed from books or from my parents or from school or from whatever, from, from my experience in the past. So it creates, I don't know, it's suddenly very... Uh, Treat it as a waking dream. So if you look at the, at the thoughts that appear in, inside you as a dream, illusory, it frees you. You're not going to take them so seriously. Let's say you had a nightmare while sleeping in the dream, yes? And in the dream, the nightmare appeared totally real. And you were so disturbed, you were... You were homeless, no money, got sick, no security, all nightmare. You're sweating, it rain, and you're freezing, and suddenly, boom, you wake up. Instantaneously, the whole nightmare in the dream, you're freed, isn't it? Yes. So if you would treat the thoughts like a dream, a waking dream, as an illusion, you're not going to give them so much meaning. You're not going to give them so much power. They would be less and less powerful and less and less meaningful 
the less the mind reacts to them. The less the mind reacts to them, it can start to rest. And the, most, the more it rests, it rests within you, and you are that eternal peace. Okay. Yes. I can see that my questions are simply a, a trying to get somewhere, you know, already. Future. Like I'm trying to go to that peace already. Future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm feeling... You're most welcome. You can always contact us if you have questions or doubt or if you'd like to do another Skype call. Okay, I will. Thank you very much, Anand. Thank you. You're, mo you're most welcome.